Hello, I'm Travis Newhouse, Chief Architect at Upformix. And at Formix, our goal is to make it easy for operators to realize reliable infrastructure. Um, traditionally, uh, as an operator, you'll use monitoring tools that are going to provide a disruption when there's an issue inside your environment. And the operator needs to be involved and sol solving the problem, debugging the problem um, with AppFormix. Our goal is to close that loop with automation. We gather metrics, analyze those metrics, and then take action to improve the reliability and efficiency of your infrastructure. As an overview of our product, we've built a data platform that performs distributed, real-time analysis of metrics across, across your cloud infrastructure. And on top of that platform, what we have built is an interactive dashboard, an alarm system for monitoring, and state-driven orchestration so that as we're collecting data, we're analyzing that data, then we're taking action to affect where and how workloads are placed inside your infrastructure to meet an SLA that you configure as an operator. In addition, we take that data and we provide long-term trending um, reports as well as chargeback. So you can do billing to your, to your users. You can understand how the capacity of your infrastructure is changing over time. You can understand how resources are being used inside of your infrastructure. Where is the demand by your users for compute, network, storage? and memory. And finally, you can provide a self-service experience to your users. So the same experience that the operator receives to understand utilization across the infrastructure, the users can also have that same experience for their instances and their projects inside of OpenStack. And we've built this product to work across a variety of cloud infrastructure, um, including OpenStack, Kubernetes, as well as integration with AWS, so that you can have a single pane of glass to manage multiple types of cloud infrastructure in, in your environment. Um, our solution is a fully on-premise solution. Um, it's 100% software. It runs inside of your enterprise. Um, it's built as a scalable architecture and with a very simple and easy to install software that's non-disruptive to OpenStack, non-disruptive to Kubernetes. We layer on top of your existing infrastructure and provide you with insight into how resources are being utilized inside your environment. And we allow you to automate and orchestrate workload placement inside of OpenStack and Kubernetes. Um, today, what I want to do is show you, um, mostly focus on a, de a live demonstration here. I will first go into some of the interactive features in our dashboard, um, showing you about charting, alarms, uh, reports, and capacity planning. And then I'm going to describe how you can configure an SLA and demonstrate um, two uses for that f of automation. Uh, one is where we will automatically detect and migrate instances off of a host that's not meeting the service level that you've configured. And in addition, I'm going to show how we have a Nova scheduler plugin that actually places new virtual machines only on hosts that are meeting the SLA as, that you've configured. I'm just going to quickly show you the experience here from start to finish. We integrate with Keystone for authentication. So as an admin, you can log in, or as a, as a regular tenant a user, you can log in. Um, the view that you see when you log into AppFormix is role-based, and it will depend on whether you are an admin or a regular user. In this case, I've logged in as an admin, and I'm able to visualize and see all of the infrastructure in this OpenStack environment. Um, we automatically discover all the virtual machines, all of the projects, all the hosts, and as well as all the host aggregates. At a top-level dashboard, we give you a snapshot 
of how your infrastructure is performing. And this performance is based on a configurable SLA, and I'll talk about that later on in the demo. But we can quickly see which instances are unhealthy or at risk, which hosts are unhealthy or at risk, and those are configurable uh, policy to determine those, those, the status. Um, a great feature for operations is the ability to quickly find inside of your OpenStack environment some entity that you're looking for, whether it be a project, a host, or an instance. Um, you need to be able to navigate between the virtual world, where you have projects and virtual machines, and the physical, where you have actual hosts and host aggregates and real resources that are running those workloads. Um, you can quickly search by anything that you want to find, IP address, instance name, project name. Um, if I look for a, a, you know, a user's project, I can quickly click on it and see the, the quota that this project has that has been allocated, how much of that quota is being used by the project, as well as a summary of all the instances that are running inside of that project. Um, I can see and, again, navigate to the physical by seeing that these instances are running on different physical hosts. Um, I can view a snapshot of resource utilization by these instances. And these are real-time data being streamed from our agents that collect data all the way up to the dashboard. Um, if I want to see the context of which an instance is running on, I can click on that host and see the other instances that are also competing for resources with this same instance on the, on the same physical host. And I can drill down into charts that show me much more detailed metrics about the physical infrastructure. So I can th see things like the disk read rate, uh, disk response time. I can understand what's happening in the network, the packet rate, error rate, drop rate. And I can see this on a per instance basis. So each line on this graph represents one instance running on this physical host. And there's one line that shows a summary for the host itself. Again, this is a streaming real-time dashboard where I can view things in real time to understand and navigate and troubleshoot. I can go back in time to see you know, what's been happening over the last days or weeks. And because I don't always want to be looking at a dashboard 24-7, I can actually set alarms on any of these metrics that we are analyzing. So there's a complete, you know, complete list of metrics ranging from CPU I.O. wait time, response time of disk, disk failure prediction, uh, IP table rules, memory, network I.O. All these metrics are available to alarm on. And you can set both a static threshold, if you know that you want to watch for CPU above a certain percentage, or you can set dynamic thresholds, where we learn the profile of resource utilization over time and then detect and tell you when uh, resource utilization is outside of that normal band of operation. So in addition to real-time dashboards and alarms, you can do also capacity planning um, to understand like how your infrastructure capacity is changing over time. Um, we have the available capacity and use capacity plotted um, you, over, over a period of time. You can see trends. You can also see um, if you have spiky uh, workloads that spin things up and spin things down, you can observe the peak usage over time on a 10-minute, one-hour, or one-day basis. And you can see the available capacity broken down by flavor. So you can have actual tangible um, numbers to know like exactly how much capacity your users can actually use because it's not sufficient to just know you have a certain number of CPUs available across you know 50 hosts but you actually need to know what si how many flavors of a VM could I spin up how many larges extra large mediums and those all change depending on how virtual machines are scheduled and placed and how the physical infrastructure gets segmented by OpenStack Um, in addition to, to that, we have reports so you can see over time what resource consumption looks like in your infrastructure. This is useful to know what kind of hardware you want to buy in the future to meet your users' demands. 
if your users are using lots of memory, you're going to want to buy hosts that have a large amount of memory. If they're using a lot of disk or storage I.O., you're going to want to plan accordingly and build infrastructure that's going to meet those application demands. So the reports provide a long-term trend of, of resource consumption. You can generate a report for any given time period, and the summary of resource utilization across that time period is presented in both a graphical format as well as tables that you can drill and sort. Um, here we're seeing a histogram that shows us virtual uh, the, the virtual machine CPU utilization um, as a histogram showing five instances in this project we're using less than 20% CPU over this reporting period. Uh, two of them were between 20 and 40%. So this is a real quick indicator to an operator that maybe they should talk to the user and maybe right size these instances. Perhaps they could use a smaller flavor size, or perhaps they don't need so many instances to drive their application workload. Um, again, that same information is, is available in a detailed table format where you can sort and find which instances are the top users, which instances are the smallest users. Um, you can look at them as instance CPU, which is the CPU utilization inside of the instance itself, or relative to the host. You can see how much of a particular host and instance is consuming. So, these are some interactive tools that an operator can use to understand um, real-time utilization, do troubleshooting, set alarms, also do reporting. Um, I haven't touched on billing, but that's another feature of the reports is that you can set a rate um, for compute, for memory, for network I.O. and disk, and we will, based on that rate of consumption, we'll charge and you can bill users to uh, various departments that you configure. But what I'd like to go into now is a little bit around automation and how Abformix can make it easier for operators to really have a reliable infrastructure. Um, in the settings, you can define the SLA that you want to have for a host and for an instance. I'm going to look right now at what we call the risk setting. This is something where we don't think the host is offline, but we actually think you know, it's maybe not going to meet the SLA that the user wants to configure. So the user can configure, um, you know, and any number of the metrics I showed for the alarms, you can build up a set of rules that is, defines the risk profile. Um, I'm going to change over to another cluster here that I have set up for this orchestration demo and show you what we have is that um, in, this, in this infrastructure, the host risk profile is based on CPU load. And I've done a simple rule because I want to be able to demonstrate in this demo that you have, um, if the CPU utilization is above 90%, for 30 seconds uh, sustained, then we're going to mark that host as at risk. And what we want to do is we don't want our applications to be running on that host anymore because we think it's not going to meet the SLA that our users expect to receive for their applications. What you can see right here is that I have three hosts. And right now, there's two instances that have been scheduled on each of these hosts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a, um, I have an application running that's listening for notifications. When the status of that host changes, um, we push out a notification that you can respond to. Uh, we integrate with PagerDuty. We integrate with ServiceNow, Slack. And you can also write your own custom endpoints, which is what I've done here to create an infrastructure controller. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up uh, some CPU load on this host. Compute 2. And as that CPU load increases um, for that 30 seconds, the state of that host is going to become at risk. And a notification is going to be pushed out, pushed out to the listener. And that listener is going to actually initiate migration um, inside of OpenStack. So we're, it's going to call out to a Nova API to live migrate the instances off of that host because it's no longer meeting the SLA that I have configured. Um, so the CPU load uh, should be increasing right now. As there are 30 seconds, we will see the risk uh, change here to at risk. We can see the CPU is spiked up here um, in real time. Now the host is at risk. It's telling us CPU utilization is above 90%. If I move back here, we're going to start to see these instances be migrated. 
off of the host. So we see the status of the instance is migrating. Um, OpenStack will be moving that to another available host inside the infrastructure um, that Nova schedules it on. Uh, the migration will just take a little minute here or two. But what I also want to show now is that once those instances have migrated off of the host, um, we also don't want to schedule any new instances on that host because, again, it's not meeting the SLA. We don't want to see an instance get scheduled there and then need it to be notified that it should be migrated off. And that will take a lot of time and potentially is even slightly disruptive. Um, we see these instances now have both migrated off. So I'm going to move over to Horizon and spawn up a couple other instances here. Now, with AppFormix, we also have a Nova scheduler plugin that is going to be aware of the state of the hosts that are meeting the SLA or not. And it's going to tell the Nova scheduler not to put any instances on the hosts that are not meeting the SLA. So I'm just going to spin up uh, six instances here. while these are spinning up. Normally, what would happen is the Nova scheduler tries to basically spread instances evenly across the infrastructure. So I created six new instances. And typically, what we would have seen is that we had three instances running on two of the hosts and zero on the host that we had evacuated. Uh, normally, OpenStack would have put two instances across each of those hosts and tried to balance it. But because Abformix has detected that this host compute 2 is not meeting the SLA, um, our scheduler plugin is not allowing OpenStack to put any instances on that host until it becomes healthy once again. Um, and I can quickly show you that if I stop the load. Um, we saw that those additional instances that I spawned up were only scheduled on compute 1 and compute 3. We're seeing here a little bit of uh, load on the Compute 1 because of all those instances that were being spawned up. And if we look at this host, Compute 2, we'll see the CPU utilization should start uh, dipping down after I've stopped that load. Just double check. So all hosts are good and healthy. If I were to spin up additional instances, we will see those populate now again on Compute 2, because um, that's now, once again, available for OpenStack to use. It's meeting the SLA that we've configured. And there's the four instances they've, they've, they've shown up. Um, for tiny instances that we created. Um, if you have any additional questions, would like to learn more about AppFormix, uh, I welcome you to join us at our booth. Um, we're located um, near the exit uh, to the marketplace. And look forward to t talking to you some more. Thank you.